It is time for Answers Party Line today for your Thursday, dis- no, November, I was going to say December, no, I'm getting a little anxious, November the 4th, 2021, Answers Party Line brought to you by Wimmer Optician St. Cloud, Chiropractic Connection of St. Joseph, my name is Brad Melke, good morning, in studio with us, Dennis Fuchs, the SWCD Soil and Water Conservation District Administrator, right? You haven't changed positions, you're the No, same. you nailed it, Brad. Still the Administrator and District Conservationist. Natural Resources Conservation Service, NRCS. Chris, oh, Chris, you're at the same position, too. You haven't upgraded or anything? No. Nope. Still a team lead at the, at the office. There will be a day sometime. Someday. I'll get kicked out, but right. right now, I'm still there. Fine. What are we talking about today, sirs? Well, you want to talk a little bit about the uh, EQIP sign-up uh, deadline coming up here? I know it's continuous uh, sign-up, but the application the, for this first scoring and ranking is coming up mighty quick, right? Chris? Yeah, we have uh, the Equip 2022 sign up cutoff deadline, which is going to be November 19th. So, for folks who are interested in addressing any resource concerns that they may have on their farm uh, in any of the counties or surrounding, they will be looking for that deadline. They need to have an application signed. The agency, NRCS, Natural Resources Conservation Service, is taking applications over the phone. By email, you can also request it through a letter, just as long as we have the information necessary to complete the uh, application form. And then at the earliest convenience, we will get signatures from you. And as far as signatures, we can even do a digital signature through the Internet. Uh, We have some programs since COVID came around and knocked everybody out of the offices and we all had to social distance. We've made some changes within the agency that have been very beneficial. So we have opportunities now to do digital signatures using something that they call box and one span. And it's basically just like you would for signing on a house. So you just identify yourself and then you just click buttons and then that will sign that document. It's and that is slick. Yeah, it is. And it, it's actually considered a, a legal signature at that okay. point in time. So we can accept them that way. So. Again, if you have any kind of resource concern that you'd like to address, and that's anything, um, I know we have a number of ag waste um, folks that are looking for assistance with basically implementing a manure storage or something like that, a practice like that. Those usually take a year or two to kind of work through because they're very technical. There's a lot of engineering and planning that goes into those. But if you're looking at that, uh, in some cases, you need to have a comprehensive nutrient management plan, and those are usually done ahead of time. So we also have funding to assist with that. So if you're looking in the future to do any kind of manure management storage type projects, it would be good to get an application in for those uh, comprehensive nutrient management plans and get them kind of done ahead of time. But usually if you have like a earthwork project, like a water and sediment control basin or grass waterway grass waterway um if you're interested in cover crops those are all pretty easy quick practices that can be planned within the year um a lot of the more complicated like i said engineering type practices they can kind of drag out for a year or two but doesn't mean that you can't start now and get an application going but um it's usually we're looking for getting the rest of those kind of things done in one year Chris, uh, I know in the past that uh, we've had several folks sign up and uh, the equip dollars uh, ran out. Is there any word if there's additional equip dollars uh, on this next uh, round? I am unsure about funding. We have not received our funding yet as far as this year goes, but uh, there is potential where there could be additional funding coming through. Um, it's kind of all up in the air. I wish I could have more control over the funding, but they don't give me the checkbook. So that's up way above me. Yeah. I'm on the bottom of the totem pole. It's the top of the totem pole that runs that show. Definitely. I, and I know uh, they've been talking a lot about climate smart uh, strategies with this new administration and additional dollars. So if if you do come in and sign up and you're not accepted or there's uh, not enough funding to, to fund your project, the opportunity in the future could be increasing. Correct. And if you come in and apply, those applications are usually kept for a period of time unless you cancel it on your own. We'll defer those from year to year until we either get you funding or you look at us and say, okay, I'm done. I don't want to apply Mm. anymore. But uh, those are um, 
usually a year to year type thing, but uh, you're, you are correct. If we end up getting an application before the 19th and we have additional dollars, we may have a second cutoff and uh, take the addition, you know, some of the ones that didn't get funded and, and move them forward and hopefully get funding for them if the money comes around. And occasionally uh, throughout the state of Minnesota, you'll have people sign up that also decide or there's something that happens in their family or whatever where they back out of the 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 project and then those funds are shifted throughout the state then? Correct. And you have some folks like we have, a uh, like we did last year, we had some large ag waste type projects where they were doing manure storage. And uh, due to COVID, the wood cost, cost of lumber went up, cost of concrete went up, and it was just, it was too much for some of the producers. So they backed out of their contracts and that, again, freed up money for for an additional applications to be funded. So there's always a little bit of an opportunity. And um, if you've got resource concerns or practices you want to look into, make sure you give the offices a call and we can work through those and see if we can get some incentive payments out to help you get those things installed. But right now you don't have a backlog or anything. You don't, you're not referring back to previous contracts that need funding. Everything is up to date? At this no, point? no. We have a backlog. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. We have a backlog that... So, so they're going to get priority for any new things that are coming? They are going to just... It's it's a competitive ranking across the state. Okay. And uh, so Minnesota's kind of changed things around, and so we have, we have different fund pools. Oh. We have one fund pool that is more team-oriented, so we have money for the team for certain conservation practices. Then there's area fund pools, and those fund pools are more of the manure storage type fund pools, kind of the larger dollar figure fund pools. And then the state has uh, dollars and fund pools, and that's usually socially disadvantaged, beginning farmer, and a couple of other ones that they manage over the over. Mm -hmm. So there's there's dollars in different fund pools. So if you're socially disadvantaged or a beginning farmer, it's a great opportunity now. the new administration is focusing on socially disadvantaged and beginning farmers and, and wanting them to be applying. We're looking to fund those applications. I think the priority is a certain percentage of our funding goes to those two. Uh, veteran uh, Veterans are also another, uh, another focal point. Uh, but you don't 100% fund their project. You have a portion no, of that. No, we yeah, won't, I, no. No. Uh, the agency will not fund a hundred percent. You, I think the max we can probably do is about seventy five percent and up to ninety percent for beginning farmers and socially disadvantaged. Oh. But we like to have the producer have a little skin in the game because when they have a little skin in the game, then that shows that you know they they understand the value. They're invested. Of, yeah, and they're going to probably take better care, maintain better, do a you know work right. with it a lot better. Right. So Chris, when uh, uh, a farmer comes in and signs up uh, the more resource concerns they can address uh, in the application do they score higher then yeah they can if you can bundle pack or bundle projects or um, practices yeah that can increase your score like i said it is competitive across the state within the fund pool that you apply for so if you apply for like local funding like co- cover crops could just be from our local fund pool so you would be going against basically other people in Stearns County or other people in on the Weight Park customer service team. Um, if it's ag waste or manure storage type projects, you would be looking at doing it throughout the entire state. So they look at um, basically what practices you're implementing and benefit. You know, there's a whole voodoo math thing that's tied to all that. <laughs> So, are you guys doing the math? Who's doing the Who's doing the figuring here? Who's uh, the figuring is done with a computer program, okay. so it kind of takes our it takes the human error out of it. Sure. So it's kind of done outside of what we do. We just work with the producer to answer the questions and do. It's more of conservation oriented. So the more practices that you can implement, the better your score is going to be. The better your score, the higher chance you get to get funded. So it's it's all kind of what do you have out there. What are you trying to address, and how can we make it work in your application? And then if you do have several projects within your application, you don't have to get them all done the first year. No, no. You, we usually move those out. Um, usually you have to have one practice implemented within the first 12 months, and then, yeah, we work with you to develop a plan on something that you're comfortable with. So like mm-hmm. cover crops, 
you know, we could get a plan scheduled so you would be starting maybe next fall. But on an ag waste, we could hold that off and do, you know, we could do it like in 2023, you know, that ag waste construction. But you have to be able to get something done within the first 12 months after signing your application, which could be as easy as doing a cover crop or a nutrient management plan or something like that as part of the CNMP. But, but what's to prevent them from, well, let's put eight plans in place and let's, you know, submit the application. Oh, the, our our planners work with them. We're going to just do one. So we, we, right. we'll look at it all in a full farm. But we'll just put one plan. You get too many plans together, it right. starts to get confusing for staff and the producer. We want to keep it easy and keep it simple. That's why we have planning staff on the soil and water conservation district side. And in our CS side, if I had employees. But um, <laughs> when we get the employees on my side, we w- will help producers maneuver through. Because just because they sign up for Equip doesn't mean that we don't have other things that are possibilities, such as um, so. Yeah. Uh, Sock River Watershed has some cover crop, and State has some cover crop funding, and we have some special, which I think Dennis is going to talk to. Yeah, after the break, we'll talk about some special funding uh, that we uh, uh, were informed of uh, this past week. Yeah, so, you know, we have some special funding, and then that sometimes comes through uh, later on in the year. So if we know what producers are looking for and we help them plan, we can kind of the staff can help them maneuver through and find out what works best for them so they get kind of what they need and we can spread the dollars and leverage dollars with other funding pools. So is there a time where you will know the funding that's coming in or is it just kind of whenever it's available? Um, we There will be a time when we know the funding that's coming in, but at this point in time, it has not been delivered. Nothing. At least it okay. has them. It may, they may know above, but they haven't delivered it to <laughs> they the They haven't field told office. you about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> We're usually the last to know, actually. (laughs) Usually the producers will know more about the funding than we do because they'll publish it in just about every farm article that's around. So they'll know probably before we do, hey, you've got funding. (laughs) Really? (laughs) We got funding? And then about a week later, we'll get the information. Oh, here's your funding. And so. Then, and quickly here before I cut you off for news how soon do you notify that okay with this funding now we're going to go with your project or we're going to go with your project uh probably the beginning of the year okay i mean we'll start working through those ranking and and they haven't really sent out the deadlines of when we have to have them all ranked and and, mm-hmm. and figured but the application is november 19th and if they're not in by november 19th then they're going to be in the next sign up perfect let's go to news 9 30 chasm radio we are your dependable neighbor All right, more answers. Party line here on Chasm Radio. Visiting with Dennis Fuchs from the Soil and Water Conservation District. Also, Chris Hogue from the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Let's talk some special funding you had said, uh, Dennis. Yeah, so uh, I think the listeners have heard us talk in the past about a special project area between farming, St. Martin, and Richmond. Uh, uh, It does have a name. It's called All Acres for Our Water. And uh, uh, in that project area, uh, we have received some special funding from former CEO, Greg Page uh, of Cargill, and uh, he's been working with us on uh, and the Nature Conservancy on how to best use those funds. And what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of uh, sediment and nutrients from this watershed uh, by 20% before it hits the Sock River chain of lakes. And uh, we're leveraging uh, our ag retailers, uh, working with a few of the local uh, co-ops in the area, including uh, Cold Spring, uh, uh, St. Martin and Painesville, and uh, working with them to uh, get them some special equipment such as uh, drills, no-till drills, or cover crop seeders uh, to get more cover crops out in the area. The other thing that uh, we have done in the area is uh, we completed a Mississippi River Basin Initiative readiness uh, study. And uh, let me just give you a little background on that uh, MRBI. I won't be saying Mississippi River Basin Initiative. I'll just say MRBI. And, uh, you know, everybody knows uh, uh, Mississippi is known as America's River. The Mississippi River uh, is the largest river flowing over 2,300 miles through America's heartland to the Gulf of Mexico. It is the centerpiece of the second largest watershed in the world. The watershed not only provides drinking water, food, industry, recreation for millions of people. It also hosts a globally significant migratory flyway and is home over to 325 bird species. This vital river's elevated levels of nutrients and sediments can impact the quality of life 
for tens of millions of people who live and rely on the Mississippi River Basin. Elevated nutrient levels are also contributing to the Gulf of Mexico hypoxic uh, zone. That's the area where they have very low oxygen levels in the ocean. To address these water quality concerns and egg sources of nutrients and sediment, NRCS and the SWCD works with farmers and conservation partners to implement conservation practices that help trap sediment and reduce the nutrient runoff to improve the overall health of the Mississippi River. So as part of this MRBI application process, you have to go through a readiness phase. So what we did is we uh, went and took a look at that uh, watershed, the Bacchus Lake area, the all acres for our water project area between St. Martin Farming and Richmond, and uh, took a look at where we had the greatest opportunity for sediment to move, uh, looking at digital elevation maps and using some models, and then also uh, uh, followed up with some site visits uh, uh, with farmers uh, in the uh, priority areas and uh, shared with them the uh, project and the potential for some funding. So we had the Greg Page Cargill uh, funding to help us do some cover crops and some other things out in that area, along with our ag retailers. And uh, we also provided a Minnesota Ag Water Quality Certification incentive for folks to have the assessment completed so we'd have a better understanding of their resource concerns on their farm. And now we just found out last week that uh, uh, we submitted the MRBI implementation. You, you identify where the problems are and where the resource concerns are. And we put this in an application, and we just found out last week that we were successful in bringing those dollars uh, back to the county to help these folks address their resource concerns. Now, that's a five-year uh, program, the implementation. And uh, the first phase is about $800,000, and uh, it can be used for a variety of things that help avoid, trap, and and control sediment and nutrient losses across that watershed. So it could be as simple as cover crops, uh, nutrient management, or a more complex project such as an animal waste management system or wetland restoration. So uh, we are going to be working with folks. Uh, uh, that sign up uh, concurs at the same time as the EQIP application, November 19th, right? Uh, yep, Chris? November 19th. And uh, so we've got. A, a few folks uh, that I know uh, are on the list for animal waste management systems, but if there are other folks living in that area, it would be a great opportunity to sign up and proceed with uh, getting those resource concerns solved. So you have 800000 at the first phase, you said? Correct. Are you? Are, is there a number of, of people that you want signed up to utilize that amount of money, preferably? Uh, Optionally, or yeah, it's, so we do have the you know animal waste management systems can be uh, a significant expense. I don't know, uh, Chris, off the top of your head, what they range from a uh, could, could be as cheap as a hundred thousand up to four hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, they're usually yeah they can range from anything from fifty to sixty thousand all the way up to are we cap them at four hundred fifty thousand? Uh, that may change this year, but I'm not sure. We haven't gotten our funding kind of how it's going to break out. But I think on average, they're somewhere between two hundred fifty to three hundred thousand dollars when you start working with that large type producer. So when you say first phase, is this going to be a portion of this first phase to be used towards a larger project, possibly? Yes. And how many dollars is in your total contract? Was, uh, was it one point uh, seven? Was it one point seven? Yeah. Yeah. And eight hundred is the first part of that. Yeah, okay, that's the first. It. So we we had to kind of guess uh, each year out of the five year uh, time period how much we'd get okay. done each year. So this first year we estimated uh, several animal waste management systems and a variety of other conservation practices like cover crops, nutrient management, uh, crop residue management, and wetland restorations. And we put down that ballpark number, and then each year after that we we also. Uh, provided additional estimates, which is extremely difficult, never knowing, uh, you know, what the yeah. ag economy is going to do. You know, if you get a drought, you know, farmers might be more reluctant to proceed with a project if, uh, you know, their potential income is going to be limited. Because like uh, Chris mentioned earlier, these uh, funds do not cover 100% of the project. You know, we try to get them up to 75% unless you're one of those limited resource or beginning farmer uh, folks, then we try to get you up to 90%. So those folks uh, uh, definitely should be taking advantage of this program. If uh, you're looking at solving your resource concerns and you want to get a little additional 
support, financial support, and also the technical assistance is provided uh, as part of this. You know, so uh, the engineering associated with an animal waste management system, if you had to have a private engineer come out and do that, that is a significant cost. Uh, uh, not as expensive as an attorney, but uh, it is quite expensive. Yeah, it is. There's, we have... We have cost assistance to help with a little bit of that, but most generally you're, you're going to incur quite a bit of cost for that sort of survey design from a TSP. They work very well with us. We work hand-in-hand uh, hand with a lot of TSPs. They do a quality job, but that, it, that is a little bit extra that you have to take into account. Um, the one thing that is interesting about MRBI and some of these other special fund pools is you can actually – like with Equip, we have a set budget. We can only spend so much dollars, then that's it. There's nothing more. But I believe, and I'm not sure you would know more, but I believe MRBI, you can actually spend ahead. So if you have a if you have 1.7 million and you have a million dollars worth of applications, you can actually take next year's funding and move it back oh. or move it towards this year to cover your applications that you have. So there is the possibility as long as everybody's in agreement to it. To, so you can spend the money ahead. You just don't want to ever return unused funds. Who's everybody to agree? <laughs> Whoever was part of that uh, agreement okay. is, and, and submitted it, I think it was just the soil and water. So it's going to be pretty consistent. Dennis just has to agree. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. So I, I want to let the listeners know, too, that, uh, you know, bringing the, in, in these additional dollars allows us to maybe leverage the equip dollars, the environmental quality incentive program dollars throughout the, the county because uh, we're, we'll be using this pool of funds to help these farmers. And then we'll hopefully have some additional dollars to help other farmers uh, address uh, their resource concerns in, in the non-priority project area. That is an important that is an important point that needs to be probably yelled out more often if you can get special projects such as this 1.7 million or even just the 800,000 in the county here last year the the team budget just for our team was somewhere around 150 to 100 or 130 to 150 thousand dollars give or take a little bit that went throughout the team now we have 800 some thousand dollars in this county just for this county that means that the dollars that i have for my allocation for equip can be spread out over other areas of the county we have a northeast area allocation for ag waste projects if we spend three or four hundred thousand on ag waste in this county for funds that's three or four hundred thousand dollars that can be spread out in other counties that can be utilized to get more people with ag waste or other conservation practices on the ground. So the more money that we can get in through special projects allows us to spread out our dollars for other other program or other fund pools to, you know, increase our producer participation. Okay. I also want to let the listeners know that uh, this money just doesn't fall on Stearns. I mean, it, it takes a dedicated team of folks uh, that really are working hard to bring these dollars into the county. And uh, we have one of the best uh, soil water conservation district teams with NRCS in the nation. And that's part of the reason why you're seeing these extra dollars coming into Stearns County to address our resource concerns. Nobody said, you know, you guys should really put this application together. We looked at the resource concerns, we looked at our partners, and then our partners look at the Stearns SWCD and, our, and the NRCS team to help them implement special projects. When uh, the Nature Conservancy was looking for a watershed where Greg Page, uh, former CEO of Cargo, could use some of his dollars to experiment on what a real focused effort could happen, the Stearns uh, area came to the highlight because of our past success in getting work done. So I just want the listeners to know that uh, we know how hard uh, you work uh, farming and uh, taking care of our resources, and we want to stand there right beside you and help you as much as possible. And that is an important part of it. Just just because you put together an MRBI or a special funding application doesn't mean that it's going to be accepted. It doesn't mean that it's going to be approved or agreed to or anything. Some of the things that are very important is the partnerships and um, who's part of your partnership and, and you know what are they providing. And it is that plays a significant role in whether it gets funded or not. The more partners you have, the better chance you have to be funded. 
and the Stearns County Soil and Water Conservation District and NRCS. We have worked together for many, many years developing these types of projects, and we have a track record of success and that is the important part of it is the track record of success that we have working with our producers to get conservation implemented and it's not it's it's that teamwork atmosphere in the office and our ability to work with the producers and the producers willingness to work with us that makes this such a success and so i have to shout out and say thank you to the Soil and Water Conservation District just for putting together the application. And I'll send a shout out for producers just thanking them for all the work that they do because I know I work for the federal government and sometimes we get things a little combobulated and messed up. But you guys have been all patient with us to work through all those little issues and that means a lot for us and uh, we just continue to try to improve and to provide a good service for each of you. All right. I'm, I'm going to switch gears here, uh, Chris. Oh, my gosh. Brad, if it's all right with you guys. I want to talk a, a little bit about uh, economics of soil health. Uh, the Soil Health Institute uh, recently uh, conducted a study on uh, uh, does soil health uh, things help pay for, for the farm? Do you make more money uh, per acre? And uh, the, you look across the county when you're, when you're driving across uh, central Minnesota and, and our surrounding counties, and you can definitely see there's more cover crops, areas that are green. But then there are other areas I am just not very impressed where uh, we're seeing uh, moldboard plow and then secondary tillage. You, you'd think somebody was going to be planting carrots yet this fall. Uh, a, a carrot is a very small seed where you need a very fine seed bed. Uh, but that is not what's happening. Uh, we're seeing uh, in, in areas, not across the, the whole area, but there are areas where we could definitely be reducing the amount of tillage. And, you know, some folks think that uh, this is what needs to be done in order to make money. And uh, this study was uh, done on 100 farms uh, across several states, including Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, Minnesota, Nebraska, Ohio, South Dakota and Tennessee, and they looked at uh, 100 farmers and almost 200,000 acres uh, uh, that were implementing uh, cover crops and other soil health practices, such as uh, uh, reduced or no-till uh, on these situations. And uh, some of the things that they found is that these farmers were using no-till on 85% of their cropland and cover crops on over 50% of their cropland, well above the national average of 37% of no-till and 5% for cover crops. Those farmers using no-till had been doing so for an average of 19 years. So if it's not working, you're not going to continue to keep doing it. And if you're doing it for 19 years, if they figured out it's a, it's a very effective way to grow crops. Uh, 67% of the farmers interviewed reported an increased yield from soil health management system. Uh, 2% re reported a decreased corn yield. So once again, 67% reported an increased, 2% reported a decreased. Uh, that's a significant difference there between the folks that are actually seeing an advantage and those that aren't. It costs on an average of $25 an acre less to grow corn and about $17 less to grow soybean using soil health management system. And the soil health management systems increase net income for 85% of the farmers growing corn and 88% growing soybeans. So almost 90% uh, of the corn and soybeans uh, farmers saw increased net income, and that's net income. Based on uh, standardized prices, the soil health management system increased net income for these 100 farmers by an average of $52 an acre for corn and $45 an acre for soybeans. That's an extra, so you take that times 100 uh, acres times uh, 50 bucks, you, you do the math, there's an extra five grand. Uh, I went to Painesville High School, I get that math right there, Iowa kid. I don't know. I don't do math in public. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I do math in public in my head, I'm going to mess it up. But, you know, that information is all great. And I, and I love that kind of scientific information. But let's put this down to like Stearns County farmers or Minnesota farmers. One thing that I want folks to understand is these are all great numbers. And I love 
numbers and the facts and everybody needs to go and you didn't quote where you got your information from, you should probably let people know so you can, they can go and research it. But for producers who are interested in this kind of stuff, nobody says you have to do your entire farming operation. Nobody says you have to do everything you farm no-till. That's a or great, great point, Or everything you do cover crop. We're not saying everything. We're saying start. Try 20 acres. 20 acres. Do five acres of cover crop. Keep it separate. See how it works in your farming operation. Do the management side of it. Be successful. If you're not successful, you're not going to continue. If you do 100 acres and you can't get it in place at the right time when things need to be done... You're not going to be successful. Do something that's successful. Do something that you can maintain and manage. And no one said that a producer needs to do their entire farming operation. I want you to do a 20-acre piece like like Dennis said. Do 20 acres. Do it for a couple of years. See how it works. Oh, I don't like this cover crop. Or I don't like my no-till. I want to do it a little different. And then make those changes on that 20 acres until you're successful on the 20 acres. And then do 30 or 40 takes time so uh, chris brings up a good point so that was the soil health institute economics of soil health practices that's uh, their latest report and chris is uh, hitting it head on i mean you don't need to do your whole farm experiment with a smaller acreage and also there's a lot of people that are doing this successfully and there's a soil management summit coming up december 14th and 15th down at uh, mankato and uh, we do offer scholarships from the SWCD to attend this. And we just found out this week they're also going to have uh, – so it's going to be live in person, but they're also going to be doing a virtual, uh, somewhat little bit limited uh, uh, conference too. And it's going to have a, a reduced registration. But we do have scholarships of $100 for folks that want to go attend it in, uh, uh, down at Mankato or $50 if you just want to do the virtual. And the registration uh, – Try to get that done before the end of the month if you're interested. They got farmers down there. They're going to share what works, what doesn't work, so you don't have to make the same mistakes, and you can hit the ground running. Uh, the early bird fee is $155 for the full conference, and like I said, we do have a $100 scholarship. And for the virtual, that'll be $100, uh, and we'll have a $50 scholarship for that. And if you're interested uh, in attending the Soil Management Summit, which is, again, going to be down at Mankato or virtually, and that's going to be December 14th or 15th, give our office a call. Even if you want to equip application or sign up for this, give our office a call. And that phone number is 320-251-7800, extension 3. And you can let them know what you're interested in. If you want a scholarship for the Soil Management Health Summit, we will get you set up with that and show you how to get logged in. And if you want to take an equip application. Correct. Equip applications are due November 19th, and we can get them in and get you ready to go. I also want to revisit the whole equip and field. And I don't want you to do your entire farming operation. And the program equip or CSP, which is Conservation Stewardship Program, none of those have any minimum makers either. They don't have maximum acres. So if you want to work with cover crops and you think, oh, I'm going to do equip, i got to do my whole farming operation, that is not true. You can still just pick one farm or one field or a certain set of acres and do that through the equip program for experimenting to see if it works. So don't think just because you fill out an application, i got to do my entire farm. Nobody's asking you to do that. We want you to be successful, and that is the bottom line. Yeah, exactly. Give us your contact information. Okay, one more time. We're going to give you the uh, phone number to the Wade Park Field Office, which includes the Stearns SWCD, NRCS, and the Farm Service Agency. And I'm going to direct you to the SWCD NRCS uh, phone line. That's 320-251-7800. And we're at extension 3. Give us a call and let us help you solve your resource concerns. Thank you very much, Brad, for having us. Thank you, Dennis Fuchs from the Soil and Water Conservation District, NRCS, uh, Natural Resources Conservation Service. Chris Hogue joining us. Uh, it is a minute past 10. We've got some news information coming up.